In this video, we're gonna be talking about this ugly thing, what went wrong, and what you can do to avoid my mistakes. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're wrapping up this Fender series. So, a lot of stuff happened with this, and it's kind of been in the background for a long time, so I wanna talk about what happened, some of the mistakes that I made along the way, how I corrected them, and what you can do to change that. So, first things first, I've had this car for a long time. I've designed several different wide bodies, even done some expanding foam and manually shaped ones. It's never quite happy, but I've always played around with it in CAD from a model that I had in AutoCAD to modeling it in Blender to scanning it and working in Fusion. So when Shining 3D offered up a scanner for a couple months, I jumped at the chance. They specifically wanted a webinar on scanning car parts and designing wide bodies. That's what they asked for. So this was a perfect opportunity because this car's sitting here and it's something I always wanted to do. So fast forward to when I got the scanner, it was about mid-December 2022. So that's generally a bad time to start anything. But I started, I scanned, I did as much as I could. I was happy with the results, but I never quite finished the project for a few reasons. One is partially due to mistakes that I made along the way, and one is just some circumstances that happened. So once I started actually printing this thing, I was using my Creality Ender 7 and all of the CR silk material that I just had laying around. The first couple of pieces printed fine. There were no major problems. When I ran out of this blue color, I switched to this orange. Again, no real problems, except for this piece for some reason kept failing, so I made it pretty thick and just had a lot of infill and I got past that piece and then I ran out of the orange material and moved on to this purple and this is where everything started to go wrong. This big piece here was purple originally and I printed it probably four or five times each time on that machine even though it's relatively fast we're talking 15 to 20 hour print times. And what ended up happening is the last version of it that I had I thought was going to be good and it ended up delaminating, and after I glued it all together, it just started falling apart. It wasn't very firm, and it just had problems. So that was something that caused me to shelf this thing for quite a long time. Every time I would say, oh, let me try to print it again, a different material, and I would just have problems. Moving on to the bigger pieces on the back, I started to add these vertical supports in the Z direction while I was printing. They not only help with the structure of the fender when it's all glued together, but they helped with printing as well because as these pieces got up to 250 millimeters and taller, every little bit of wiggle would cause problems with the print. Um, this last piece here I did with the K1 Max that I got back in December, and this thing printed perfectly fine. Uh, it printed full speed at 600 millimeters a second. It's using the Hyper, the Hyper PLA from them, and that Hyper PLA is actually really strong compared to everything else. So I would highly recommend that. I ended up getting a deal under $700 for that printer, so I was pretty happy with that result because the Ender 7 just gave me problems on some of these pieces for quite a while. So a couple of other things that I had trouble with along the way is some of the lips to glue these pieces together really just should have been a lot bigger. I kind of underestimated how much gluing space I would need to actually get a clamp on. So some areas I was able to clamp together just fine with a C-clamp or a spring clamp, but other areas I ended up using things like weights and tape to hold it together. Uh, and that unfortunately caused a problem because the epoxy that I used to, to glue everything together reacted with the tape and the stuff is just on here. You can't get it off. So I could sand it down if I was gonna use this, but um, at the end of the day, I'm just not going to. Also, some of them shifted while they were curing. Now the epoxy I got had a fairly short shelf life, so I was thinking that once I had them held in place for a minute or two, that it would be fine. But this piece here, for example, has a lip. So in order to fix that, I'd have to cut it and, and re-glue it, which is what I ended up having to do with that purple section right in the middle. So the end goal for this was always to have a piece that I could build a mold off of. So I wasn't really concerned with printing it all in the same color or anything like that, uh, which is why it kind of looks like this. But at the end of the day, if I'm honest, it's just not the direction that I want to go with the car. Um, this car, this version of this car, I should say, has a 215 front on a 15 inch rim. People can fit 225s, 235s on these without really doing much work. 
and I don't need to go that much more. Uh, so I've actually designed a new wide body, a, a fairly minimal one, that's still gonna be over fender, but it's not gonna be the whole fender. And I'm not gonna show that until I actually have it done. But I've done two or three versions of it already. I'm gonna start printing parts and, and checking it, but I really don't need to go more than like a 245 up front and maybe a 275 in the back. And honestly, a 245, almost a 255 will fit in the back. So there's not, I don't need this extreme of a wide body to, to do what I want to with this car. Overall, I was happy with the results. It does fit. And the original intent was to epoxy it in place and use some of the metal mounting points as part of the mold. Um, it does give me that over fender look that I wanted at the rear. So I think everything was exactly how I expected it to be. But just at the end of the day, it's gonna go a different direction. So if you were doing this, what should you do different? Well, from the design side of things, nothing. Everything on the design side was fine from the scanning to the design to breaking it up in all the different pieces. It really comes down to adding some additional supports so that these pieces don't have to be so thick. Uh, two to three millimeters is perfectly fine as long as you can get some extra structure in the back of them. Make sure that the lips between them are as big as you can make them. Even if you want to have to cut them down later, having a larger area to clamp is, is helpful. And also toss in some registration marks, even some simple holes that you can put a wooden or a plastic dowel through. It's gonna make a big difference when gluing these things together. But overall, that is the process. That is where this series is going to end. This year, we're gonna be doing a lot more build series. So we're gonna be working on some of my motorcycles. This will probably come back when I get back to the wide body fender, but there's a lot more projects coming that I'll talk about in the near future. But for right now, this is where this one ends. Um, not the end of this project per se, but it's the end of this fender. Probably gonna get hung up on the wall and forgotten at some point. But if you have any questions on this or anything else we've done, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.